I have here a cup of water. If I add a little bit of sugar to this cup of water and stir it around, I've generated a nice sugar solution. This solution has a certain molarity, as defined by the number of moles of sugar in this water and the volume of the water. Now, if I now add a little bit of water to this solution, just like this, I see that the concentration of the water has changed. This is because the volume of the water is different. However, the number of sugar molecules has remained the same. I have not added or taken out any of the sugar molecules. The molarity, which is defined as the number of moles of sugar over the volume of the solution, is different now. The number of moles is the same, the volume is larger, and consequently, the concentration is less. This means that if we dilute a solution by adding more solvent, we change the volume of the solution, and we do not change the number of moles of the solute. The concentration will go down. The number of moles will remain the same. That means the number of moles before and after the dilution is the same. The number of moles can be calculated as molarity times volume. So that means that I can derive the following formula. The molarity times volume before the dilution must be the same as the molarity times volume after the dilution. So let's look at a couple of examples that puts this into practice. Let's say I have a solution. I have 1.2 liters of a 1.4 molar acetic acid solution. What if I add 0.53 liters of water on top of that? What will be the new concentration of acetic acid? One way to calculate this is the following. First, we calculate the number of moles of acetic acid. We can calculate this by multiplying the molarity with the volume. 1.4 molar times 1.2 liters, which is 1.7 mole of acetic acid. Now, upon dilution, the volume will change. The number of moles will not. So the new concentration, the molarity, is 1.7 mole over the new volume. The new volume is 1.2 liters plus the added volume, which is 0.53. Completing this calculation will give me a new concentration, which is 0.98 molar. Now note, that the concentration after is less than the concentration before. In the next example, we'd like to prepare a solution. One liter of a 0.2 molar sulfuric acid solution. We have a starting solution, which is 15 molar. Now, how much of this 15 molar solution do I need to prepare the final solution? For this kind of example, we use this formula. M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. What is M1? M1 is the original concentration of my starting solution, which is 15 molar. What is V1? I don't know that yet. I have to calculate it. M2 is the desired concentration of the solution to be prepared. That is going to be 0.2 molar. And the final volume is 1 liter. So I have all the parameters here except for V1. I can calculate V1 readily. V1 can be calculated as 0.2 molar times 1 liter divided by 15 molar, which is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 2 liters, or 13 milliliters. Let's look at one more example. In this example, we have an original solution, which is one liter in volume. We don't know its concentration yet. We want to dilute this original solution to a total volume of three liters. And we also say that the final concentration has to be 0.6 molar of silver nitrate. How do we solve this question? Well, we use exactly the same formula as before. M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. Let's fill in the values that we know. 
The original concentration, I don't know. I have to calculate that. I do know the volume of the original solution, which is one liter. The final solution needs to be three liters in volume, and the final concentration needs to be 0.6 molar. So you will see that here, again, I have one unknown. The molarity, M1, is the only unknown, so I can solve for this quite easily. M1, therefore, is 0.6 molar times 3 liters divided by 1 liter equals 1.8 molar of silver nitrate.